That's good. Thank you, church. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers for prison ministry. And we have seen the move of God there. And after that, when we went to the Bible study, uh, it is, I mean, the number of people uh, increase by your prayers. So thank God for everything what God is doing in us and through us. What a privilege to, to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What a presence of God, you know, which change everything around us. He gives his strength so we can, we can do what he has planned for us. And today my preaching on obedience. <clears throat> and I believe that for myself, obedience is actually, you can see faith in action. If you have a faith, if you obey God, then you would see faith in action. And I have uh, seen the definition of obedience according to Holman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary. It says, to hear God's word and act accordingly. Yeah. That's what obedience is. Thus, biblical obedience to God means to hear, trust, submit, and surrender to God and his word. So we have to surrender to God and his word. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful God. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered, in your name you are in the midst of your people. So we thank you for your presence, Lord God. Lord, we pray that speak to us this morning. Give us a daily bread. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 If we go to Genesis chapter 22, uh, before that, if, if we will read that, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28. I'm just summarizing that. It says, in your see, uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28, I'm just giving you summary of that. Obey and you will be blessed. Disobey and you will be cursed. But Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. It says here. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. That God is saying to Abraham. That you obeyed my voice, and from your seed, all the nation of the earth will be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if we, if we know about Abraham, I, I believe that, you know, we have heard many stories about Abraham's life, his faith. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12 to 12, chapter 50, it's all about Abraham and his son and his sons, uh, you know, and their gen genealogy and generations, what they have done for the Lord. And it has really touched my heart when, when we see Abraham's story. Here, as we know that God spoke to him when he was 75 years old. And God said, leave your family and come out from your family and I will make you a nation. And he heard the voice of the Lord and he followed without knowing where he is going. And he took all what he had to follow the commandment. And we know that God has promised for generation will be blessed through him. And he was waiting for his, his son or his children. But after 10 years, when he was 85 years old, his wife thought that maybe God don't have a plan for me, but maybe my serving lady, I can give to Abraham and she can produce child for me. And that may be the plan of God. And she gave Hagar to Abraham when he was 85, and Ishmael came when he became 86. So Abraham was 86 years old, 
and he got a son which was not God's plan. It was a mistake Abraham and Sarah did. And he was happy with, with his child, whatever he, he was thinking. But after 13 years, when Abraham became 99 years, and God made covenant with Abraham, and he said, circumcise yourself and your son and all your male, even servants. And he circumcised, he obeyed God again, and God spoke to him again. And he said, I will give you a son through Sarah, and he will have a nation, and I will bless him. Now, it is an age when, when you could see that he become 99 years old, and Sarah was barren, and she was also 10 years, let's say, you know, almost 90 years. And God is saying, I'm going to give you a son. And I will bless you and your children, children. So in 99 years old, Sarah got pregnant and they got a son and they named, even God said to, to name him Isaac. And Isaac grown up and when he was a teenager, some scholar says is about teenager, that means Abraham may be 113 year to 15 year between that. And God spoke to him once again. Meanwhile, his son, which was he supposed another son, which was Ishmael, Sarah has issue with Hagar, so they were left their house. So now only son, Abraham had Isaac. And we can go to the scripture and read some verses. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 3, I'm reading. You might have a little background. On, I cannot go through all the chapters what I have given a short clip. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 3. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountain of which I shall tell you. Now God is asking the burnt offering. Burnt offering was that mean you have to slaughter and then burn. And just imagine, Abraham has no other child. He was too old. But God is asking his loved one, his future. Even God spoke about that. And now God is asking, give it to me. Sometime in our lives, we have Isaac in our life. And if God is saying to you, give it to me, are we able to give that Isaac to the Lord? How difficult was with Abraham at that moment? I believe that, you know, and you know that Abraham was not filled with the Holy Spirit. God used to come and speak to the Old Testament prophets. But the reaction of Abraham, verse 3, so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. So he moved for that place. If you read Genesis 22, verse 4 onward. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. 
the lad and I will go yonder and worship. And we will come back to you. Just imagine, he is going to sacrifice his son, and not only the sacrifice, burnt offering. That means he gonna slaughter his son, he gonna burn his son, but he has a faith that my God can raise my son, even it can go into the fire, but my God will bring me back again, Isaac, so I can come back with Isaac. What a faith Amen. we can see Abraham had. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then he said, uh, if I would go back, verse number six, it says, So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac. That means Isaac was not two years old. Because he was carrying wood. That means approximately he was a teenager. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Just imagine how difficult situation Abraham was passing through. Because it was first time. If it happened today for someone as a believer, you have a testimony that God has done something for Abraham, he can do for me. But Abraham has no testimony, but he is going by faith. Because of the credibility of God he has seen. When he was 75 years old, he came out of his family. He has a credibility of God that if God said, my dead body can work and it produce a child, then my God can produce, my God will give my son back to me. What an amazing faith we have seen here. Thank you, Lord. As we go further, here, you know, another amazing thing I have seen in this piece of scripture, uh, Genesis chapter 22 again and verse 9 to 11, if we read that, it says, Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. What a great faith. Just imagine on this point, when Isaac, when Abraham was, was having a rope around him or, you know, he was preparing for the burnt offering or to slaughter. He was a teenager. He might think, Dad, what you are going to do? Would you want to kill me now? I'm not going to come in your hand. I'm just running from this mountain. It's your faith, not my faith. Yeah. He didn't say that. Yeah. He was a young man. He was not a baby two years where Abraham put foot and just put it onto the burnt offering. But what it tells us that the faith of Abraham was not only the faith of Abraham, the faith of Abraham was the faith of Isaac as well. Because Bible says that train up a child to the way where he has to go. When he would old, he would not turn from his ways. So Isaac knew because I believe that Abraham has shared every small bit what God has done for them. Amen. I believe that 
Isaac was not a person who has no faith. As much as the faith of Abraham had, Isaac has the same faith. Because Abraham would say to him, Isaac, my son, don't worry about it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to burn you. And God will bring back to you, to me. What a great faith he has. He was having a vision of Jesus Christ. That father will send his son. And he's going to die. And he's going to raise from death to save the world. That's the reason God said to him. On first place that from your seed I would bless the nations. Amen. What a great promise. Mm -hmm. But as he wanted to slay by his faith, God could do that. But God wanted to do for Jesus. Resurrection. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son. Now again and again, if you go to, I'm reading from New Kingdom Bible, God is saying again and again, your only son. Because Isaac was the promised son. And God asked for his sacrifice, not Ishmael's sacrifice. That's a big confusion sometimes. But it is very clear. Christian faith is on that God has asked for the Isaac sacrifice because that was a covenant child of God for Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram. And we know that God provided a ram, and he slaughtered, and he came back with his, his son. What a great testimony. But all what we have read maybe many, many times, the story from, from a very childhood, from Sunday school, but when we have a time to sacrifice, especially for, I don't know, maybe if God is saying to you for this time for Hamper Project or for your tithes and offering, for anything, are we ready to listen what God is saying? We need to once again check our motives from inside because we are more privileged people than Old Testament prophets even. Because now God is living inside us. But we can see Abraham has learned obedience over the period of time. And you know God has preserved the seed. What God said 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus. But I would say 2,000 years more back when Genesis chapter 3, when God said, from the seed of woman, I will bruise his head. The power would be destroyed. That seed God was preserving from Genesis to Abraham and from Abraham to Jesus. Because the Messiah was supposed to come to set us free. So we would have a freedom to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Few minutes before, when we were worshiping here, when we were worshiping in singing, when we were worshiping is giving, when we were worshiping praying, what a privilege. Because we are entering into the holy of holy where a high priest used to go once a year, but God has opened door for us to go on every day, every minute. We can enter into the presence of God anytime because now we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and it came only because of Jesus. In Hebrew chapter 5 verse 8, it says that though he was a son, Yet he learned obedience 
by the thing which he suffered. It's talking about Jesus. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He left heaven, came out on this earth. He was the king of king and the lord of lord. Amen. He was the creator of universe and he chose to come to set you free. What a great price God has given for you and for me. Just for a minute, just think about Prince William will leave palace and would say, I'm going to live homeless life just for the sake of, I'm just giving an example. How would you feel that? What sacrifice he made? Because he is no living, no shower, no proper food, stinking or whatever. Is this, is this make sense? He won't think about that. But Jesus has left heaven, which is more precious than the palace of Queen or Prince William. It's more precious than where he is living. He left more than prince, any prince can leave and come on, on road. But Jesus did for you and for me. And he was obedient to leave his place and come to this earth. And he was vulnerable in the hands of his own creation. What a great love God has. When God has created Adam, he was young adult. I mean, fully grown up. But when Jesus came, the second Adam came, he was totally dependent on the parent. Amen. And they brought up and he passed through every test and every trial of life which you and I am going through. Amen. We are not exceptional sometimes when we have trial and troubles in our life. It was a part of his life because he was completely human being. Amen. He might can come like second Adam, like Adam was came, all of a sudden he can come young Adam, like 30 years old. But he didn't choose in that way. He was exactly could feel what you and I can feel. That's our Messiah is. That's our Lord is. And not only he born. He did everything what father said. He said, I do nothing except my father says. He don't do anything without asking the father or without seeing what father is saying to do. Amen. And he's expecting the same criteria for you and for me. Amen. And that's the reason Bible says, all those who led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Sometimes we don't want to ask God, Lord, in that situation, what I have to do. Yeah. But as a child of God, we need to go to the Father and we need to ask him. We need to close the door. We need to ask him, Lord, what's your plan? Amen. Tell me. Amen. So need to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Jesus was born. He did all the, the work of the ministry. He was 30 years old, went to the uh, for baptism from John, and John was surprised. He said, I wanted to take baptism from you, Lord. But he said, let's just happen. And he took the baptism, and because of his humbleness, how humble he was. Again, John the Baptist was his own creation. And he came to, to him and asking him to do for something. What a love of God. And he took the baptism and God opened heaven and he said, this is my beloved son whom I well please. And Holy Spirit came on him. And from that moment, his actual ministry started. And he had been tested in wilderness for, you know, after 40 days when he was hungry, like you and I can be. I, I, I am feeling I'm thirsty. I, my, my, you know, feeling that it is Dry, can I take the water? Sorry for that. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'll just leave it here. Could you hear me? Yeah. Okay, praise God. I was feeling just total dry. My throat, sorry for that. So 
So we were talking about, I, I was talking about <laughs> John the Baptist, you know. After that, filled with the Holy Spirit, after 40 days, he wanted to drink water, he wanted to maybe uh, eat something, and devil came. And you know, any time of difficult time or any situation where you feel weak, all of a sudden different thoughts start coming. Devil want to start speaking to your life. And that is the time we need to make decisions that who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to ask, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need your strength in that particular situation because the time you've been weak in your life, enemy will come and hit you hardly. And he tried to come to Jesus. And he tried to, to test him in different area of his life. But thank God, every test he brought, Jesus said, it is written. But that was the fault in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, when Satan came to woman or Eve and Adam, they didn't say, my God said this. But Eve slightly moved the scripture, what God said, manipulates that. That's the reason they fall. But Jesus always quoted, it is written. And if we know what is written in the Bible, Amen. we can face any challenge in our life. Amen. Because sometimes our ignorance of the word of God destroy our destiny. Because we are sometimes have no idea what steps I have to take in this particular situation. So as a believer, we need to lead by the Spirit of God. How would you lead by the Spirit of God if you don't read Bible? How do you know the will of the Father when you have no good practice of the Bible? If any question come to you and you say, I don't know what the answer is, that means you don't know the scripture about that. So as a believer, filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to know the word. That's the teacher said. And I love, you know, the... The situation, because Jesus has taught his disciple, I'm just trying to cut everything and wanted to bring uh, the point I want to make. Jesus teach his, his disciple three and a half years. And Jesus provided every evidence that he is the Messiah. He is God, he claimed, son of God, you know. Even then, his disciple have sin in their life. One of them, you know that he was thief. Peter, who denied Jesus three times. Even they have seen all that, you know, what Jesus has done. He raised Lazarus after four days in front of them. And Peter, who used to say, Lord, I, I can die for you. And he denied three times when Jesus need his disciples to stand up. They were sleeping. They were not doing what they have to do. And sometimes the church, body of Christ, is not doing what it's supposed to do because either it is coronavirus or any virus, it would be worse in, in this world. We need to stand on the word of God. We need to be, pray more. We need to focus more on scripture so we can glorify his name. And you know, the situation when, when Peter denied Jesus three times, and after Jesus, when Jesus was rose again on the third day, and he was among them about uh, 40 days. Am I right? Yeah. Jesus was among them 40 days. Yeah. He was appeared many times to them, talked to them. And about 500 people, the Bible says that he was testified that he's risen Messiah. And you know, when Jesus was going to heaven... He said to his disciple, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you got the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that was the thing, everyone needs to have the Holy Spirit. What Jesus was actually saying to them, Jesus was saying to them, when I was walking with you guys, you still have weakness in, in, in your life. But I'm going to come in each of you through the Holy Spirit, and then you never deny after that. 
And that's what happened. That's the reason Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. And you know, I like the, the, the way the disciples deal that situation, that command of Jesus, because Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. And Jesus didn't say, in five days you're going to get Holy Spirit, fire or power from heaven, or six days, but he said, soon. And they will keep praying. Maybe one day, they say, Lord, send us the power. Nothing happened. Second day, third day, on the tenth day, they fill with the Holy Spirit and fire. And these 120 people has ups and down entire world. And we are more than 120 people here in this room. Amen. And if we ask God, Lord, we need a baptism of the Holy Spirit, or we are already filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord, we need the power of God to move, to change this nation. And I believe God can do that. The only thing is we are not ready. We need to go on our knees. We need to call the Lord our God so he can do signs, wonder, and miracles. Because unbeliever... We believe, we don't need, I don't need any sign to prove that God is real. I believe you don't need. But unbeliever who never seen miracle, never go to the word, never know about Jesus is real Messiah or not, they need signs, wonder, and miracle. If a wheelchair atheist can walk on the street, people would ask how it can happen. Amen. And then our Lord will be glorified. If some of one of us, you know, pray for a wheelchair person and if he jump out of the wheelchair or blind or because it should be a norm for Christians. Amen. That's what I believe. Amen. If it's not happening, Lord, forgive me. If I am weak, give me strength. I can ask forgiveness. I can ask on a daily basis. I have to assess on a daily basis why it's not happening. But I believe it's going to be happen. Soon, every Friday, we go on the street or Saturday. I believe today is the day when God going to do something supernatural. And people would come to know that my Lord yes. is above every name. Amen. His name is above every name. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So what is stopping believers not to pray? We need to pray. We need to pray day and night because the time is very close when Messiah is coming. Amen. And you would be forced to do things you want to do that. And we cannot stand on the word of God or on faith if we don't have a strong relationship with the Lord. Amen. We need to abide in Him yes. so we can do His will. Amen. I believe with depth of my heart that you know we all having plan and purpose of God it's not by chance that you are here or I am here I'm from Pakistan some you know different people different countries different part of England God is bringing here with some reason and I believe this is the time when church need to wake up and need to take the gospel onto the highways and the byways and you know we need to use the faith God has given us laying hand and pray please whenever you got opportunity lay hand and pray everywhere I go I just ask people would you like me to pray healing is not my power my desire is to pray God gonna heal but if I don't pray how I can believe that God can heal somebody I'm praying for, for many years, but I know any time, God knows the time, it's going to be happen. That expectancy, we all need. We all need to pray for the people. We all need to pray to God. If we go to our closet and we ask God, Lord, give us a vision what we have to do. Give us your word, rhema word for today, and I believe God will speak to you. Because a God is alive. He wants to speak to us. Amen. Let's Amen. close our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that <clears throat> there is a reason God has given His Holy Spirit to us. 
because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And all those who are not sure that they have baptism of the Holy Spirit, they can come later on and talk to me or one of the leadership, Brother Andrew, Mrs. Skinner, or Pastor Ken, and we will pray for you. And if you need teaching, if you need any help, we are here to help you. Because we know that God is having a great plan for this city and for this nation and for you and for me and our families. As we bless others, God going to bless us as well. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are faithful, God. Lord, what you said, you stand on your word. Lord, I thank you for each and every person in your presence right now. Lord, we all need you. Lord, we all need your anointing and your power, Lord God. Lord, we all need your wisdom and your boldness, Lord God, to talk to people without shame about talking about Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus on each and every person here right now. Lord, prepare us to sacrifice our Isaac, Lord God. And we never say, I can't do that. I can do all things in you, Lord God. Lord, I pray, touch every heart. Bless each and every person here and our families. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Sorry, once again. Before leaving that, I just want to give a chance to, to those maybe who are visiting here or never make commitment with the Lord. If you want to make commitment, if you want to give your life to the Lord, because as I was saying, we need to fill with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit baptism. It is the second or third step. First step is we need to come before God and we need to say to God, because we all do mistake. When I say mistake is a normal terminology we use, but biblical terminology is sin. We all do sin and shortfall the glory of God. So in our life, we need to come before God and we need to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive my sin and come into my life. The day someone pray this prayer, he become born again. Bible says, born with the spirit of God. And once you born with the spirit of God, then you need water baptism, immersed one. And then God gives you baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if anyone who never make commitment before God, never give his heart to the Lord, it is a time. It's a time. If you raise your hand, we will pray for you later on or right now. Anyone who want to give their heart to the Lord, I'm not selling anything. I'm telling you the truth. Because as soon as you allow him to work in your life, you're going to see how God going to change your life. I believe everyone is born again, Bible-believing, tongue-talking Christian. Thank God. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day.